I just wanted to welcome you. Dave is having a little bit of difficulties um, getting on, so I had to go in through his login. He should be on any second now, and um, I just wanted to get this started for him. How's everyone doing today as you're coming on? Let me know um, where you're coming from. Uh, we have an exciting, exciting night for you today. We have our presenters who are going to be with us on week three and on week four. So we're excited to bring them on as soon as we can get this technology to act right. Um, and then uh, you'll, you'll be with me for a few minutes while we're trying to get Dave on. I'm actually logged in under him. So we're trying to see how this is going to work. Um, I might have to pop out and then he comes back in. Um, but we'll, we'll figure it out, right? That's what we do around here. This is actually very good for those who, you know, you're here because you're not an entrepreneur. You're a spiritual entrepreneur. You want to have a business or you already currently have a business and you're wondering, how am I going to expand my business? Um, and this is just one of those things, right? We have technology. Technology is great when it functions and, you know, when it doesn't function the way we pay it to function, we kind of go, <laughs> so how do you handle that? You just handle it braced under pressure. You do the best you can um, when things like this happen because some things are just out of your control. Like right now, um, Dave said that nothing was launching for him, not even Google. So he's trying all these things to try to come on and he can't get on. So um, I'm just going to be talking to you a little bit as we're waiting for him to come on. And I'm not sure how this is going to work since I logged in under him. But again, we'll figure it figure it out. Um, he can always come in another way and I can bring him on. Um, I know we already have some people, but if you can let me know who you are and where you're from, let me know how your month is going. We're already in February, folks. Where did January go? January went so fast. And most of my uh, January was spent um, getting over things. I, I've been, I've gone over a decade without being sick and then everything hit me at once. It was like the last 10 years kind of caught up on me. I was like, what is going on? But my body's back on demand, and I'm happy to be here with you tonight. So let's let's uh, let's get started. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to come into your presence, to hear um, from Dave and the teaching that you've put on his heart to in order for us to grow more and more um, into the image and likeness of you and the image and likeness of our Messiah, Jesus. We're very excited to be here. We thank you for everything that, that you have prepared for us. We bless Dave and the presenters, other presenters who are coming on in the name of Jesus. We bless their technology. We bind every demonic force, hinders, and offense that has been and is now operating against this ministry. And the heavens on the earth, beneath the earth, and on the waters, we declare all negative forces to cease and desist your operations in the name of Jesus. We decree it. And so we thank you, Father, for um, everything that you've given us. You've given us so many spiritual tools. You've given us so many um, things in the name of Jesus that we now have access to um, in a greater measure because you are with us. And the same power that raised Jesus from the dead has sealed us for the day of promise. We are forever yours and we are forever grateful. Thank you, Father, for bringing those who need to be on tonight. We bless those who are watching this in the replay. We bless you to receive just as much as a Holy Ghost power that um, is being released in the live broadcast. We bless those who come back and see it a second time because they needed to hear something again. We bless um, all the efforts that Dave has been making through this vehicle in order to equip the saints for what we've been born to do. Thank you, Father God. I bless those in attendance and in replay that they will receive whatever it is that they need to receive in order for them to get the aha moment or the confirmation for the plans and purposes for which they've been created. We thank you that because they are here or watching it in replay, that their time will not be wasted. We bless their time in the name of Jesus, knowing that you're watching over your word to make sure that it's performed knowing that you are blessing Dave and the other presenters in the name of Jesus, knowing that you're blessing me right now with the words to say and to release so that they can receive the fullness of the blessing for which you've intended. Thank you, Father. You are so kind and so good. You are good all the time. 
all the time you're good. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. It says, hello, everyone, but I'm coming up as David. <laughs> so just wanted to uh, go ahead. And if you can connect with me in the chat, let me know what you would like to chat about. Otherwise, I'm just going to start talking, <laughs> which is fine. Uh, I would open up my mouth and God will fill it. So I'm excited about that. You know, this is when I, this is what I'm here for, right? To help him out. So what can I share with them, Lord? What would you like me to share with them in the meantime? This is, a lot of people are saying different things about this year. And one of the core things that you have to remember when you hear prophetic word is that you need to know what the prophetic word means for you. And then you need to nurture it. Hi, Charles. Thank you. And so what happens is that sometimes when you get a prophetic word, it's not, hi, Joseph. It's not nurtured. It's not really received. And so when you receive the word, you have to remember the parable of the seed, right? So when the word is released, it's going to fall. And it's the reason it gets snatched is because there's no understanding. So when you receive a prophetic word for your life or for this year or for this month, you know, whatever, wherever you're getting fed, if you don't understand the word, it will be taken from you because that is the power of understanding. Hi there. Oh, the other Dave has joined the room. Yes. <laughs> so I wanted I wanted to just bring that up with the parable. You know, you have it. The first stage is it can be stolen from you because if you don't understand. The second one is that if it's shallow, you know, so it will come up. And it can it can be taken away because when he comes against it, there's not enough of it for it to be rooted. Um, the third stage is when the cares of this world start to choke it out. And so, um, hi, Smitty, how are you? Nice to see you. Starts to choke it out. And then the fourth um, stage in that parable has to do with the 30, 60, and the 100. So when you're listening to something, when you're here with your intention, you're here because you want to receive a word for yourself, pay attention, ask the questions because you want to understand. You have to understand in order for it not to be stolen from you. You know, we can't blame everything on the devil. As soon as you start receiving knowledge and insight and that wisdom, this is God answering you. So a lot of times we want things and God answers you an idea and a suggestion. He tells you the next move and then you don't do it. You're still kind of waiting on him. The answer to your prayer came in a direction. And if you don't understand the direction of which he told you, then, then that's the next step. That is the next wisdom step. Ask for understanding in what he told you so it cannot be stolen. Then you want to take it for yourself and root it in. And one way you can root it in is, is you, need, you need to start embedding it into your belief system. And the way you do that is repetition. So if God gave you a word for this year, a word for your life, a word for this month, whatever it is that God is currently speaking to you in, then you want to root it in. So that way, you know, you just don't have quick success and then it dies on you. You want to root it in so that way it can have that 30, 60 and 100 fold. Don't be shallow. <laughs> you have to do some work. And the way you can root it in is your repetition. How do you repeat it? you know, write the vision, make it plain so that way you can run with it. Can you take that word of God that you heard for your, for this year, for this month, you know, for this week even, and how do you bring it down to a couple sentences so that way you can continually repeat it? Repetition is the key to mastery. And so you want to repeat it and you're like, well, I don't want to just keep on repeating things like a gong. You know, you're not praying it. You're just rooting it in. You're nurturing yourself in that. Saying it in the I am statements. I am whatever it is that God said in present tense because your brain does not understand past or future. It only understands now, right? Which is funny because God says now faith is. So you're saying I am whatever it is that God's saying that you are. And then it starts to root it in. So that's stage two again. Then stage three, making sure that he's not calling me. He popped out again. Um, stage three, 
then you know because because the cares of this world will come things will come up to kind of take your focus off things will come up to kind of choke it out you know because we are you know we are spirit beings but we have a soul you know we have we live in a body if you know if we're um not single you know we have children or we have you know a loved one or we are taking care of other people we have responsibilities if we're we're all working. We have responsibilities in the 3D, in the natural. And so those responsibilities can pull on you and pull you away from what God is saying to you. And so you always have, to, that's why you want to create a practice that you're always nurturing what God is telling you in a, in a way that's creating a habit. Why? Because as you're creating this habit of saying what God is saying, it starts to root out anything in you that is contrary. It starts to root out any belief system that is in you, that, that's been hiding, that was implanted in you without your permission before you were eight years old. And now you have some coding in your brain that you really didn't say yes to. You were just in this hypnotic state and things were being um, plan, you know, programmed in your mindset and into your belief system. And now that you're an adult, you think you're in free will, but you're only in free will when you're conscious. You're only in free will when you're aware. And when you are paying attention, then you're in free will and then you can make a choice. Otherwise, you're just living out of your belief system and it's in, a lot of it's automatic pilot. Um, for those who are still coming in, Davis having technical difficulties getting in. Um, so I'm in as him through one link because I couldn't get in um, unless because he's the main host. So he's trying to get back in. He's been having technical difficulties. And then um, I'm not sure. Um, there are two other presenters who were supposed to come on who are going to be with us on week three and week four. So I'm also waiting for them. But if you're here in the chat, I can bring you in. So if um, David Asher, if you can text um, uh, Pastor Dave and let him know that if he comes in, I don't know if he can come in through a link, like through the chat, then I can bring him in through the chat because he can raise his hand and then I can bring him in. Also presenters, if you are here in the chat, let me know that you're here um, and then I can bring, you can raise your hand and I can bring you in that way. So that's the other way we can bring you guys in. So if someone can connect with Dave and let him know if he can come into the chat, that's another way I can do that. He doesn't have to come in as moderator or presenter. Um, what was I, Lord? Yes. <laughs> so, so you want to um, nurture that word because the uh, cares of this world will try to choke that out of you. And so you need to be prepared for that. You know, we need to not be naive. We want to, you know, we want to have the goodness of God, the, the 30, 60, and 100 fold. We want to have the fullness of what he has for us, but we need to do the work. We need to be prepared. We need to be grown up and to take responsibility for our part in it. Thank God for, for miracles and thank God for, um, for deliverances. But most of the time, your life is not going to be in that state. So we, hi, Dave. So we need to do our part, which is to, oh, we can't hear you. <laughs> I can't hear you. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yay! Yeah. <laughs> you 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 missed my glory shout. <laughs> 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 yeah. Hey everybody. Yeah. Tonight, hey, you know what? My experience has been every time we have. Uh, malfunctions like we have tonight it is going to be awesome and uh raquel are they all primed and ready for a great show they are i just finished uh getting them getting their heart ready to receive for what you have to say so i won't ask you what you said because then you can do it all over again <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can chat, watch the replay you know hey well this is introduction and orientation to the Business Breakthrough Ministry. And I want every one of you to know, this is a divine plan of God to help you reach higher levels of success in your business. And uh, I was talking to somebody recently, they said, how do you know it works? 
And I said to them, when does prayer not work? <laughs> for, for this not to work would, would deny everything that God is because this entire ministry's concept is based on one primary foundation truth, and that is prayer makes a difference. Now, let me tell you a quick story. And uh, usually I, I, I do this every few months in our orientation and, and the introduction. But this ministry, when it got started 27 years ago, I was at a time of seeking God. How do we get the wealth of the wicked into the kingdom of God? And what God said to me is, remember your soul winning program. And uh, what happened was I knew nothing about soul winning back in 1979, but this new church put me in charge of soul winning. I mean, I was radical, but I knew nothing about anything except everyone needs Jesus. And I can tell you, I want so many people to the Lord. And let me say it this way. I led so many people to the Lord that didn't get saved. They said the sinner's prayer just to get rid of me because I did not accept no. They, I mean, because when someone said no, that just meant they didn't hear enough yet, right? Well, anyway, with all that enthusiasm, this new church put me in charge of evangelism. And we had, I had about 14 people that all said, yeah, I'll, I'll follow you, David. We'll, we'll do it together. Well, the very first week, we all agreed to meet on Monday night. Very first week, half of them did not show up. I called them up and said, hey, where are you? And one person said, my car broke. Another person said, the kids got sick. Someone else said, I had to work late. And someone had actually said, you know, mom-in-law showed up, you know, messed up everything. Hard to imagine mom in laws can do that. But anyway, they all had different reasons. Well, next week, the same thing happened. And it wasn't the same people, wasn't the same excuses, but here's the deal. These people wanted to learn soul winning. They wanted to learn how to go out and share their faith. But they, they, they didn't make it there because stuff happened that was just like, you know, stuff happens. Cards break, machines break, stuff like that. Well, anyway, the next day after the second meeting, I get the materials and church order for me. Great program. It's called the Evangelism Explosion from uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Kennedy in Coral Ridge, Florida, Florida, Presbyterian program. Well, they, I, I opened the training materials and the first page of the book, it said, hey, this is going to happen. The devil is going to mess up your program if you don't pray. They said, we, we discovered many, many years of doing this program that when you do a soul winning program and people want to come and learn soul winning, their car is going to break down, kids are going to get sick, and, and all this stuff's going to happen because the devil is interfering with learning soul winning. They said, here's what they learned. Now, this is the, this is the, this is the genius of the business breakthrough program because this is what they learned. Two people praying for every soul winner made the difference. And uh, not a lot of prayer, but just praying every day for a little bit for, a, a, for that person to be able to, to do what was in their heart to do, to do soul winning. So I called everybody up and said, hey, here's the deal. We have to pray. Now, you know what? This sounds so fundamental right now. But to me, 40 years ago, and we're talking like 39 and a half years, actually. But prayer, was that was, that was re revelation to me. That, I mean, I had no idea that there was something like a devil that was stopping us. But uh, anyway... I called everybody up and said, here, here's the deal. Get two people to pray for you and uh, every day, but especially on Monday, because that was a so winning day. They all did it. Guess what? They all showed up. The next Monday, they all showed up. Now, I tell you something. I taught that program many, many times in many different places, many countries around the world, and I can tell you it always happens the same way. The devil does not want you to learn soul winning. He does not want you to be involved in winning souls in any way, shape, or form. So what here, here now, that was 1979 and, and now 1980. Now here we are, 1991, 1992, and God says to me, I'm praying, how do I get the wealth of the wicked? He says, first off, he said to me, business people were a key because he was positioning them in places of opportunity. Why? Because they had unlimited ability because he could open doors for bigger contracts. He could, he could make a way for greater sales, for greater profits, because he can do some things with business people. That's a bit more challenging when you're working a clock, you know, paying, you know, getting paid an hourly rate. 
but he said specifically he was positioning business people that particular business people that had a heart to make money for the kingdom now i know not all people are like that and there's a lot of christians in business in that they are just christians in business and some don't even tight but there are some people in business that want to make money not not to tithe, but they can tithe more than their tithe. They can give over and above their tithe. And they, they can they can tithe 30, 40, 50%. And I'll tell you what, I've learned this over the years. You can, if you tithe 50%, you can, you can do better living on 50% than you could have ever lived on 100% or 90%. Because I'll tell you what, you cannot outgive God and God will bless your business beyond anything you can imagine when you're sowing it into the kingdom for his purposes. Anyway, God said to me, after he told me he was positioning people in places of business, he says, but now remember the soul winning program. Ah, oh, revelation. Why? Because when you have a heart as a business person to make money for the kingdom, you're involved in soul winning. And what's happening is because you're in, you're wanting to make money to advance the kingdom, equipment breaks, contracts get canceled, employees are unfaithful, stuff happens that interferes with your success, with your profitability, and, and even sometimes your health. Because why? The devil is trying his best to keep you from making that extra money that you can advance the kingdom. So that's when i mean i mean this this is old news to me because this goes back to 1991 92 when we started the program so then god began to show me the need as well to teach business people you know principles and concepts of faith principles of operating in the supernatural concepts of hearing the voice of god walking in the spirit walking in the supernatural spiritual warfare so that's where we started and uh, that goes way back again to 1991 1992 and back in those days, where oftentimes where I was coming to a city regularly, like I lived here in Tulsa, we would do a meeting every month. And what we would do in that meeting is once a month I would teach. We'd have we usually have a, a breakfast or a lunch together. And then we would break into groups of three. And again, two per partners. That's the key, two per partners. So we would break into groups, groups of three and each person would get two prayer partners. I would use a four-part form, and we would uh, fill a four-part prayer request form in to what you wanted God's help with for the next 30 days, next 90 days, next six months to a year. People would fill these four-part four forms in, and what would happen is we would then, each person would get one copy of the form, I get one copy to pray over, and then they would pray at the meeting, but then here's the key, here's the genius, they each agreed to pray for their two people for two minutes a day, every day. And I can tell you with many years of success, and Ray Kale is one of them, they're looking at you right now with that big smile. She's one of those people. But we, we saw many multi-million dollar companies birth, many companies that had just incredible accounts receivable. And all that was tied up because of spiritual warfare and people um, became very, very blessed. And Raquel, have you by chance shared your testimony you, when, when I was floundering with equipment? No, I was uh, teaching on the parable of the four, four uh, the seats. <laughs> <laughs> I love that parable. I'll have to yes. go back and listen to it now. Yes. T take, a, <laughs> take a couple of minutes real quickly, and then we're gonna move on. Hey, I got two great guests in my office here tonight and uh, I, I want you to meet both of those great people they're going to be coming back and uh, sharing on the third and the fourth monday nights of this month but again this night monday night is the idea here is to give you an introduction and orientation to encourage you to be part of this ministry and uh, you know until last summer we we never did this kind of international global networking it was just where i could be in a city for a certain amount of time and a number of years ago really until just recently i was going to rockford illinois every month and uh, raquel lives in chicago it's about two hours away but she and her sister i'll let her tell a story but she and her sister literally for years drove two hours once a month to be a part of one of these business breakthrough sessions 
Yeah. Well, anyway, last July, it was kind of interesting. I took some time alone to be alone with God. It's kind of a funny story. And Raquel, I'm not sure you heard the story before. But I, I took three days last summer to go out to the lake, go camping, and just be alone with God. And uh, God knew the devil was going to attack me because the first night I had, God had me up all night long, literally. But in that all night long, he spoke to me so clearly. And he said, business breakthrough, take it global. So people around the world can be part of it. And uh, in, after much prayer, we, we started the plan. Now, I'll share with you in a minute. See, but God knew that the attack was coming because the next morning, a tornado hit my tent. It was just bizarre, and the storm came out of nowhere. And uh, But I had everything I needed to know the first night. God made sure of that. But what he said to me is every Monday night, do a business breaker meeting. And uh, so what we decided to do, first Monday of the month, we, we do, this is it orientation, introduction, encourage you, inspire you, charge you to be part of this ministry and uh, let God help you to reach new levels of success. Next Tuesday night, uh, next Monday night, see every Tuesday night, I, I've been doing a Tuesday night meeting for seven years, but next Monday night is the most important meeting of the whole month because that's where we are going to, I'm going to teach, matter of fact, next week I'm teaching on visualizing and meditation how to bring the unseen into the seen realm. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Uh, and what you want to do is you want to begin to see yourself more successful than you are. You want to begin to see yourself as a person that ties 20 or 30 percent. You want to see yourself writing out those $1,000 checks to missions. But you'll never have it until you start seeing it. But we'll talk about that next week. But then after, after, the, after the teaching, we're going to send you to a prayer form, and then you're going to fill in, just like we did at the, the, the uh, breakfasts and, and, and lunches. You're going to fill a form in, and then we're going to put you in, in, a, in, in a group of two other people that are going to pray with you. You're going to connect over the Internet, and you're going to pray for each other for two minutes a day for 30 days. Now, some people are getting they're, they're, they're so enjoying the networking and the fellowship. we got a couple of groups that are around their third month. They don't want they don't want to go of their partnership. But I said, that's it. Now, three, three months and you have to get new partners because other people want to enjoy your what you have learned here. So that's Monday one, Monday two. Now, Monday three, we, we help people to find, identify business opportunities. And we're going to come back to that because we got a gal here with me in the office tonight that's going to share with you about her business opportunity, that how she started the cleaning business. Uh, 15 years ago? Actually, it's been seven. Seven years. Okay. I'll come back to that in a minute. She's, I'm, I'm looking at her sitting across <laughs> from me here. We're going to bring her right up next to me here in a minute. Uh, then anyway, she's going to be with us on the third week, how she started uh, her own entrepreneur business as a cleaning business. So come back to that. On the fourth Monday of the month is what we do for helping people to learn skills and, and develop the different aspects of their business, whether it's learning how to close better, how to do internet marketing better, how to do all kinds of different skills better. And uh, we have a guest here with us tonight that's going to be sharing on the fourth uh, Friday. <laughs> Friday, oh God, I'm going so fast here. Fourth Monday of the month, and that's going to be Hank Bailey. I'll tell you what. Tomorrow night is our is our, my weekly live YouTube, and he's going to be back with me tomorrow night. You're going to want to make sure you're here for that as well. But he's going to share with you how to tap into unseen uh, gifts and talents and things that are that uh, how to harvest that which is inside of you, something like that. He'll tell you more about it. But anyway, fourth Monday of the month is skills development, business development. And we got a great month plan. Now, before I bring my guest in, Raquel, I want you to share a quick testimony, what this ministry had did for you and your sister Josie, maybe, because you both traveled a lot for a couple of years. Take it away. Yes. yes. Um, so for those who, who don't know the story, um, I had seen Dave on television. Um, he was on um, Bill Winston. And then uh, two days later, I saw him on Sid Roth. And I said, there he is again. Um, and then I looked him up and I and I felt like, oh, look him up. And when I did, I saw that he was going to be in Rockford. 
And I was like, where's Rockford? I was like, okay, that's only like two hours away. So I, told, I called my sister up and I said, let's go to Rockford. She's like, what's in Rockford? I said, Dave Martin. She's like, who's he? I go, he's great. I saw him on TV. Let's go. <laughs> let's go. He's got this cool concept with this business breakthrough stuff. And my sister and I always love, you know, ideas about being entrepreneurs. Um, so we decided to go and then we we went every month for, you know, several years. We went every month. Um, so it was a it was a great time for my sister and I. It was a it was a time for us to just get away from our families and our kids and our jobs and just have like that sister time. So we really enjoyed <laughs> and he never the- told me that part before. It was a getaway. I always tell you a little bit more, every story, so it's always fresh. <laughs> so, it was- <laughs> so it was great because it was like it was, you know, it was our special fellowship time. It would pray and worship on the way there. And then God always showed up. Every My sister and I would be praying in the car. And we were like, you know, this is what, we, what we're asking God for, some direction about this or that. And without fail, every single time, God would show up and answer our question in a teaching that Dave was, was saying. So he would be teaching. We're like, we were just talking about that in the car. <laughs> We knew month after month that we were in the same right place at the right time and that God was honoring our sacrifice of getting up at five in the morning to be with Dave at 730 <laughs> because we we were hungry for God and we expected him to show up. And it was just an act of faith of like, well, let's, you know, let's let's go have some fun and be a little whimsical and go visit this guy we I saw on TV. <laughs> And since then, my sister and I have really grown in our in our places where we're at the top of our game as sisters of GM um, for Smart Cart at Midway. I'm a, I'm a, 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 a AR supervisor, but I'm I'm like a global supervisor there where I'm at. Um, and I really enjoy my day job. I'm my you know my boss's proxy. He's a really great mentor, so I've been learning a lot for him. And God has just really opened up doors where, you know, um, we laugh because we're like, we're paid like white men. <laughs> so, or in, in, in our, uh, what we do, um, uh, there's not a lot of Latinas. There's definitely not a lot of women. There's not a lot of Latin women in what we do. And, um, and the women who are in this space are not paid the way we are. And we just been implementing everything that God is, has shown us through this ministry about being diligent, about prayer, about serving, serving. I'm getting into the word and really just I'm doing those things that again are simple, but they're not they're sim- they're simple and easy and hard at the same time because it it you need to have consistency. And that's one of the things that that David has had over the years. He is consistently passionate about the things of God. What is God doing now? Being on the cutting edge. So that has transferred to us where we want to be involved with the cutting edge of things, where we want to be involved in what God is doing right now. And we have seen the fruit of it. Our our children are blessed because of it, because they're seeing the way we're living our lives. And, and, you know, my children, they love going to church. They love reading the word. They love getting involved um, with the things of the church. But that was because that love is in me and that that has been really nurtured through this ministry. So I'm really grateful because I know, you know, where God's taking me and it's it's going, it's amazing. And I'm starting to see a little, little things happening in my business right now, you know, and I'm, you know, eventually, you know, I won't be able to do my day job and my dream job. In the meantime, you know, having fun in my day job <laughs> and still working on my dream job, which is great. Um, and that's another thing, principle, right? You uh, grow where you're planted. And this is where God has planted me right now. He's planted me here to help Dave. He's planted me in my day job to help my boss. He's planted me in my business to help the people who he's bringing to me. And you just be faithful, be faithful in the things. Um, so pay attention, <laughs> pay attention and um, decide to understand what God is trying to tell you tonight, because you will not be disappointed. I promise you that you won't. Amen. Praise God. I'll give an extra five dollar tip now, Raquel. That was really good. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> That'll be more than I paid you all in the last two years. <laughs> well, hey, here's everybody, here's your takeaway now. Make sure you come back next Monday night, second Monday of the month. That is our most significant, most important Monday, because again, there's gonna be a powerful life-changing teaching. Then at the end of the teaching, we're going to send you over to a form online to fill in a prayer form. And there on on that form, you're going to put in uh, three or four uh, 30-day objectives. What do you want to see God help you accomplish 
in the next 30 days. And that's where the focal point of prayer is going to be to uh, see those prayer requests are answered and that they will stop from interfering uh, with your success. Then you're going to write down three or four things you want to see God help you with in the next three months to six months, and then a couple more items, six months to one year, and then one final thing we ask you at the bottom, and that is a spiritual objective. When do you want to see yourself improve in reading your Bible more every day, praying more every day, fasting, whatever the case may be, but establish some spiritual objective every day. So takeaway for tonight, come back next Monday night and uh, be ready to experience God's help better than you've ever seen it before. Can we get an amen from somebody? Amen. Hey, I amen. got a studio audience here tonight. Yeah, probably recognize my background is different. We, we moved, we moved uh, out into uh, my lobby here so we could do this tonight with a couple extra guests. And uh, I bought a new camera and we have a studio with a green screen so we can make a really fancy background, but uh, the camera wasn't working. So we're doing old school here. So, hey, Let's get ready for our first guest tonight. I'm going to kind of uh, shift the, the screen around here a little bit. So we go full screen. And Raquel, I'm going to downsize you a little bit to make room here for Christine as she's making her way to come forward here. So I'm going to supersize me and my guest here. And there she is, everybody. Yeah. Yes. Okay, Christine. Hello. Okay, now come, come a little closer to me here. I'm going to bite you. All right. And uh, there we go. Raquel, you know, I don't, I don't bite, do I? No. <laughs> so for those of you that didn't read the email, let me give you a little background here. When we started the business, Breakthrough Ministry, this last summer, and, and the idea was to have the third Monday of the month be relative to uh business opportunities different ways people that don't have a business can start a business one of the first things i thought of was when i moved here with my wife back in 1982 to go to bible school she started a cleaning business and uh, she and her actually was her singing partner she, my wife and her partner sang and they they were most incredible matter of fact they sang for ken copeland one time and he actually dedicated one of his albums mm. to a, a song that they did called Shine. That was the name of the song. And their cleaning business, guess what was called? Shine. Shine. <laughs> yeah. You're pretty oh. smart. So anyway, when we started this a business opportunity, I thought, you know what? I got to find somebody that is a, a Christian doing a cleaning business, and I'm going to have them share because I know this works because my wife did it and it helped and put me through Bible school. Right. Uh, so it was a very profitable, very successful business and it worked with the hours that were available. And I looked and looked to find somebody that had such a business and it wasn't God's timing because he has somebody special planned. And uh, I didn't meet this person, Christine, until just two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. We were at a, uh, a meeting here in town. Uh, great, great. Um, you, you, we'll tell you more about this, but not right now, but it's a group called City Elders. But she was at the meeting, and the City Elders meeting had never, ever done this before, meeting every week. But they went around the room and had people stand up, announce them who they were and what they did. And when Christine stood up, she said, I have a cleaning business. <laughs> if you were going to see me, my jaw would have dropped down. My eyes got so big. I thought, ah! <laughs> God answered my praise, prayer. Praise God. So anyway, here's Christine. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to have her share a little bit with you and uh, how her business is. Maybe a little. Now, again, keep in mind, she only has 10 minutes here. And I'm not sure where we are in time here because I know I got on here pretty late. So we might go a couple minutes late, but I think we'll be okay. So what, what she's going to come back again on the third week, uh, third Monday of this month. Do you remember what date that is? I think it was the 16th or 18th. Okay, whatever 18th, it is. Probably. The third third it's Monday. 18th. Okay, 18th. perfect. I, ne I never use the numbers. I always use the first Monday, second Monday, third Monday. So it's going to for the third Monday. So you're going to get the whole shooting match here. So I said, Christine, just tell them enough to get them excited about wanting to come back and hear the whole story. So here you are. Well, I am. Um... I just want to thank the Lord. He is uh, taken and, and brought us together. And David, I have 
I, when I met David, I, you know that when you're around him, that he's that he's a blessed man. Um, the Holy Spirit is activated around him, and it's it's an honor. Uh, when we met, when when we met, That's I was like, Spirit. oh my God, he doesn't even know me, and and he's already asking me to be on this, and so I jumped on a few weeks ago, uh, and actually Ra Raquel, you were on, and um, I was like, David. Oh my goodness. I don't know if this is, you know, if you're ready, if I'm ready for this and he says, Oh yeah, you are. And if you say it like that, then you know, you're ready for it. <laughs> so it's all God. And, that, and that's right. So I, I just, I just praise the Lord and, and thank him for this time to share what he has done. Um, nothing that I have done. He has taken uh, my business into, to be his business because I've just been so open um, through prayer to do that. And as David was sharing earlier, um, you know, the concept of two by two, I'll share with you that that is what my business does. We go to uh, people at a time into a home and serve the Lord through prayer. So to be on David's uh, ministry team and to be praying over him the last few weeks and with him, uh, just to see his concept and um, the agreement that goes along with my business and, and what he does for business builders for kingdom purpose, um, it, it's been, I'm in total agreement. So to share with you about the women and um, that God has provided in my company, as well as uh, men, we have actually had some men, there's been two men that have come and, and worked uh, alongside me. Um, it is, it's a team concept. And the first four years, um, it was two at a time. And we had eight employees up to 12 at one time. And, um, you know, 15 to 20 hours a week, keeping a, uh, a part time, you know, position for women that mainly had children. But as this has progressed, it has helped single women. It has helped women that um, have had a little trouble in their past, but have come in and, and wanted to get back acclimated um, into the world um, and, and be, you know, promoted, you know, and be able to work and serve others. And that's what cleaning is about. Um, but interesting enough, David, as we have served other people, the clients um, that have come into uh, my business that have asked us to come and, and serve them have been uh, beyond measure. They have been people that have actually ended up serving us, uh, have served and stood alongside some of these women um, that have come in to their homes they've come and called me and they've said christine you wouldn't believe i've been blessed with a bed um you wouldn't believe my daughter received a coach purse um you wouldn't believe some of the things that have happened and those were my prayers um praying over my girls and these men some men um god superseded anything that i could ask for and um at the generosity by the Holy Spirit and they go in two by two and we ask about, you know, if there's issue when you walk in, pray, pray for one another. And so they go in and they pray for each other and then they go in and they serve. They separately go into two areas of the home and they serve. Um, People say, well, I'm not outgoing. I don't want to go into a house and, and serve. Well, as uh, I started the business, I went in with a girl that was an introvert. And as you can see, I'm the extrovert. <laughs> and, uh, and, <laughs> and I said, OK, Lord, how are we going to do this? Because, you know, she wants to be with me and she wants to work and she wants to work the hours of eight to two, eight to three and be there for her kids. So how do I do this? And he said, oh, put her in the bathroom. No one wants to go talk to you when you're in the bathroom and then let her run the vacuum cleaner. So um, she can't hear and she can't talk to anybody. But after a few months, she became acclimated to the clients and there was a love fest and uh, everything supernaturally. So in what, love came out. What, so. what, you, what you're going to learn here on, on her, her Monday night. Yeah. Is not only how to start a cleaning business, That's right? That's right. And and they'll probably make some money too, right? Oh yeah, they will. Just a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> <laughs> but here, I mean, here, this is like the best of, of mm -hmm. multiple things here because you're you're helping mm -hmm. potentially people not only launch a business but launch a real ministry. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, because no, you know, no matter where we are in business, we're always ministries. That's right. I mean, but we're talking here about something over the edge and over the top in terms of ministry purpose. Mm -hmm. I didn't. Know and that. as That's as awesome. we grew, as we grew, that first four years, we would go, we would pray for one another, and the Lord kept saying, "Okay, you're going to have other girls come. I'm going to expand your business." And as that. As he multiplied the business, what happened was he took me out of actually going in and, and doing the work. I, I still go in and I work and uh, clean and and love to be with the girls and serve the clients um, and the girls uh, serving each other. But uh, the Lord has also taken me into ministry inside the church as an evangelism minister, also out and, and because of my business, I've been, he's provided the funds so that I could go into different states throughout the United States in intercession and pray. So he's expanded um, kingdoms so large outside of the Tulsa area for me so, and now expanding it into different countries. International. Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah, yeah. Hey, right now, you're going to have to have a, a travel partner now when we go to Kenya and we launch uh, Business through <laughs> Kenya. You don't have to yes. twist my arm. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, I think we, we used up our 10 minutes. Yeah. Okay. So now, everybody, now you have two things to mark down on your, your, your do list now. Next Monday night, second Monday of the month, you're going to be here and you're going to participate in the greatest, most incredible mm -hmm. prayer ministry for business oh. on planet mm -hmm. Earth, bar none, except one I don't know about. So, but seriously, then those of you that are looking for ideas on how to expand your present business into greater dimensions of, of ministry, yes. is, I mean, I, I can see that. I, mean, I can see that takeaway where what you just heard, maybe you're a plumber, maybe you're an electrician, you know, maybe you're a carpet installer, maybe you're whatever, but uh, what you just heard will work in any kind of business. Mm -hmm. So. You know, being more purposeful in your business to be ministry minded. I like that. Mm -hmm. So mark your calendar for the third Monday of the month. And, and you're going to have Christine for almost a whole hour. Yay. All right. Hey. All right. Hey. hey. Yay. All righty. <laughs> exit stage yes. left. Yes. We're going to invite uh, <laughs> Bailey up here. Come on, Hank. Take up, take up. Hey. Hello, Davey. Hey, we got him in the hot seat now. Yeah. Well, you're a heck of a technician. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're having way too much fun. And, uh, and, and and this is what ministry is supposed to be, fun. And, uh, you know, yeah, there's a lot of work in it, but uh, also it's fun. And I got, I guess I met Hank a month ago. Well, I don't know. I remember driving a long ways in your car with you. <laughs> we At least we got the front. That's the good news. Yes, we drove well, all the way out to Oklahoma City from Tulsa, and uh, uh, me sitting on the on one side, you, you yes. driving. A, I, to say we didn't talk or get anything done would be an understatement. I'm sure we probably told every story we know. So he told most stories. No, you entertained me. <laughs> there, there's a, there's, a, there's definitely nine gifts of the spirit that people are well acclimated to, but there's a few people I know that have the tenth gift of the spirit. That is the gift to get. Oh, my and, and sorry. <laughs> I don't know. And I've been, I, I told my wife, I said, this guy's got that gift. I love him. That's why he's here, because I love him. Hey, I've been to Chicago. <laughs> oh, yeah? Yeah, we, we got up there and got on the Navy Pier, and uh, we rented these Segways, and it's, I've never been on a Segway before. So yeah. fortunately, they put you on these Segways, and they try to teach you how to get on them first and ride. And I mean, we're standing on these things just like shaking, and and the first time, they, they make you just make a run like 50 feet mm -hmm. or something across mm -hmm. this flat grass and come back. And the whole way, we're going like this, this scared to death. But it's funny, within like 30 minutes, you're going crazy on these things, just flying. We're driving all around downtown, north of the Navy Pier there, all through town. We even came up into intersections, talking to each other. Okay, now pause, pause, these. pause. You only, got, you only got nine and a half minutes left here. This is the good stuff, anyway. <laughs> I told you, he's got the good fun. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Later. I, we, we traveled to Oklahoma City for the city elders meeting. The governor, we had the privilege of going and praying with the governor, a Christian governor that is a protege of, of uh, President Trump. 
he knows nothing about politics. Oh yeah. A very successful business person. And his first <laughs> order of business was to have, have prayer for he and his wife. And uh, he told the story. This was a funny story because he knows nothing about politics. And he's a very successful businessman, much like Trump. I mean, companies all over the all over the United States, very, very successful. But anyway, uh, when he, God told him, he said, I want you to go into politics. He said, what? Not me. But yeah, he did. So he put together a team and the opposition, well, I mean, his, his uh, uh, what was that guy? Uh, he, he, he ran his campaign. He said, yeah. we, we got to do some opposition research. Oh, yeah. And he said, on who? And he said, on you. This is Kevin Stitt, the governor. And he said, why? He said, well, we got to find out what kind of dirt they're going to dig up and talk oh, about yeah. you. So a couple of days later, he came back and he said, uh, Kevin, who's now the governor, he said, is it true that you have never, ever voted? Oh, yeah. <laughs> In the governor's election? Yeah. He said, I told governor. you. Yeah. I told you I know nothing about politics. But I <laughs> promise you, what you're going to watch happen in Oklahoma is going to be a model for what's going to happen in the entire United States. Yeah. Matter of fact, when we did this meeting here a couple of weeks ago, Lance Wall now came in and spoke with us at lunch. And he said, what you guys got to do going here is going to be replicated in every state in America. And uh, I mean, there's a lot going on there, but hey, we're not here talking about that. But I want, I want to. It's like talking about segways. You know? yeah, <laughs> yeah, and, there's, there's, and I love Lance. Here's the segue. I know how you feel. That's here's the segue. Way. Could happen to anybody. <laughs> Anyway, sometimes there's eleven. <laughs> sometimes there's eleven gifts of the spirit. Oh, so <laughs> you know, is that way. personal? Well, it's a tag team. Don't make it personal. <laughs> but no, seriously. <laughs> something I recognize about Hank is he is one of those kind of people. When he's when you're in when when you're with him, you leave encouraged. Wow. You you feel built up, and you feel inspired. And I don't know if he knows anything about business, but what I do know is he knows how to motivate people. He knows how to encourage people. And he, he on, on the way to Oklahoma City and back, he was telling me about this book that he has just finished. It's, I mean, it's going off to a publisher. And tomorrow night on our Tuesday night program, we're going to be talking the whole hour tomorrow night on, on YouTube Live. Uh, and you can just go to the ministry website there and click on YouTube. All you have to do really, though, is go to YouTube, type in Living Supernaturally, and we'll come up number one. But 8 o'clock tomorrow night, uh, he's going to be talking about this book. What's the title of it again? Well, it's called Outbreak of the Global Brain. You won't believe it. You will not believe what you'll hear tomorrow. I night. didn't believe it until I started writing. Yeah. What's what is going on in artificial intelligence and machine learning yeah. and, and the spy agencies, you won't believe what you're about to hear tomorrow night. But anyway, yeah. that's tomorrow night. Tonight, I want to give him just a few more minutes here to encourage you to come to the fourth Monday night of the month because he's going to have a whole hour to encourage you, inspire you, motivate you. and so I'll let him take over and take a few minutes here. Hank, it's all yours. Well, just tell me when we're done. And, uh, you know, when I was you in have business. four and a half minutes. Well, that's great. You know, I wish you I hadn't talked about those uh, segues. But nonetheless, <laughs> they're, in business for me, the thing that I struggled with the most, and I always said this over and over, if I had a really good employee, I could be a millionaire. You know, and if I could just get the right employee, it was always the struggle that we had. So this is really bizarre what I'm about to tell you. Uh, there was a seminar done maybe 30 years ago now, and it was about retaining employees. And it's funny how this thing about retaining employees, retaining employees, it also rolls downhill to you as a boss, as an owner, as an owner. But of course, as an owner, we're a lot more open to hearing about the employee and their problems and how to fix that. So I'll start with that. But this is the bizarre concept that I think is so cool. You can have your company, 
and an employee, and you know that you only make so much money, but you have this many bills, you can only afford to pay this employee so much. So how can you get any more value out of your business than what is already there? You can't just make money grow on trees. Is there any place where there's value? Well, let me show you a sneaky way to go mine some more value out of this limited resource that you call your own business. And this is the weirdest concept of how this was done. They did a study and found out during this seminar, like 30 years ago, that if you would sit down with your employee on Monday morning and actually talk with them about what they're going to do on Saturday on their day off and force them to actually tell you where they're going to go with their family, what they're going to do. And what you do, you just buy breakfast for your employee on Monday morning, sit down and talk about them and get them to plan where they're going to go on their time off and what they're going to do and structure their fun time as the same way you expect them to structure their work time. And if they say they're going to go to the beach that Saturday and take their kids, then you tell them what time are you getting up? What time are you scheduling it? And the reason they get so particular, this seminar taught that if you leave people alone and let them approach their free time as if it's free, it will get wasted away and they will be unhappy and not satisfied with what they do for a living because what it buys them in their personal time is not worth it. So if you can mm -hmm. raise the value of their own free time, they have see more value in what your job is providing for them. And it starts to roll downhill and create a snowball effect that affects other areas of your life. And it affects your work. It affects things. And I'll get into that in more depth later when we come back. But I thought that was such a unique deal. We actually had a lunchroom built in and we would sit and I would buy them uh, breakfast in the mornings and we would talk about fishing, talk about things and found out for me, it was a stretch because I'm a disorganized person. I just fly by the seat of my pants. So it really had an effect on me when I sat down and started getting my employees to structure their time off. And cause I will end with this. I found out one time I took an entire year off and I had my bass boat and I fished all over everywhere I wanted, even drugged that boat all the way to Florida and fished back. I had free time. Do you know what day? There were days that it was a perfect fishing day. And I would say tomorrow I'm going to fish and nobody's going to bother me. I'm going to run that beautiful bass boat in that water. Nothing stopping me. I had a gorgeous tow vehicle to tow it with and everything. So I'd wake up the next morning, leisurely watch some TV, then realize, well, oh, I shouldn't have watched the rest of that show, but now it's nine o'clock. Well, let me grab some breakfast. I'd take some time, grab some breakfast. Do you know by now it'd be 10, 15, 10, 30. Then I turn around and go, okay, well, I'm going to do this or do that. And then I'll take the boat. Do you know what ended up happening more days than not? I looked at the clock and I go, it's one o'clock already. I don't think I'll even start today. I don't think I'll go. Oh. Now, see, this is human nature when you don't have time, when you, when you, you don't schedule your time and you have too much time. The opposite end of the spectrum is when you only have one weekend, if you will turn it into something valuable, you have bought more luxury, more family time, more enjoyment, more satisfaction, and more accomplished with the exact same amount of dollars. We need to work on that next time we get to Hey, no. What do you think? How's that, how's that fly? That was good. That was good. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. it's good because I love the concept of um, breaking bread. Um, somebody here, uh, Smitty, is actually he owns his own barbecue. Um, that's his passion, and uh, that's my I always passion you know, too. I encourage him, and I'm like, that's that's really a great way to serve people because you're breaking bread together. You're you're creating a space where people can just bring down their walls. And there's nothing like breaking bread together that brings down the walls. People start sharing, they're more free. And then they're like, they feel more connected. So I love the concept of, of just breaking bread together and then having a conversation because it really does knit like a little nucleus family within the workplace. And then, you know, you happy know, employees, they do yeah. better. You know, when, they're, when they feel connected, they feel appreciated, they feel valued. You know, um, and then you get them excited for the weekend. <laughs> They're like, yeah, let me just structure everything so I can I can have the things that I want to have in the weekend. And I just kind of, you know, take it away. Yeah. Watch Thanks somebody else's talk. vision all day. <laughs> yeah, you, you, the reason people go in business for themselves is so they can have the things they want to have and have the freedom they want to have. And then we find out that because we're in charge, we imprison ourselves. And these are the, some of the cycles that we want to break because the business owners are suicidal. They're self-destructive.
<laughs> All right, now before we start another topic, we got to end. <laughs> Good um, job. End it. You know what? I can hardly wait for the third and the fourth Monday now. Mm-hmm. But we yeah, have to can't wait. Monday first. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yes. Hey, before we close, Raquel, I want to thank you for covering me in our technology here. Okay. I, uh, it was all my fault. I can't even blame technology. It was awful. It was my fault. Yeah. I, 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 I tried to uh, earlier in the day see if I could use my Bluetooth and my headset at the same time, and it didn't work. And but I didn't turn the Bluetooth off, so we were having all this audio problem. I thought it was the new camera, and then the computer, and then as we rebooted for the fourth time, it dawned on me, Bluetooth. <laughs> hey everybody, sorry I messed up, but I know you were in good hands. Matter of fact, I told my guests in the studio here, I said Raquel's going to do a great job. She always does, and I'm sure you did, Raquel. Thank you so very much. And You're welcome. Uh, you know. He, he, even if you weren't smart, I mean, even if you didn't know what to say, all you got to do is sit there and look pretty. Did you hear that? <laughs> and you, We you, were better off talking about segues. <laughs> Everybody, I want to thank you so much for putting up with us tonight, especially me. And uh, I'm, I'm honored that you, we have this privilege of speaking to your life. And I want to just encourage you now to uh, come back next Monday night. And uh, great teaching on meditation, visualizing. And, uh, and then the prayer, I promise you, it's going to get God more involved in your business. So everybody, have yourself a great, wonderful week. And again, if you can make it tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, uh, Living Supernaturally on YouTube. Uh, you're going you're gonna to hear the, about the book that Hank has just written. I just, I just got a copy of it today. And uh, we're, actually, we're, we're talking about possibly getting getting a pre-release copy made available for those that might be interested so we might have that answer for you tomorrow by tomorrow night so anyway thank you we have look those that can come back tomorrow night and uh, raquel again thank you and uh, we'll see you next monday again and everybody else be blessed see you next week nice bless. meeting you see you next week bye now bye bye